Hey, welcome back to the channel. Got a little something on the bench for you here. So I got my Super Duper Mega Ultralight 138G 4S 5 incher V2.2. <laughs> that, that name never gets old. I don't know why. Uh, so anyway, we already went through the frame. So we got a we got a pre-build video of the frame, all the pieces, parts, why we did it. And then we also have a VTX. So we got the VTX video out of the way. So if there's any questions on that. And now the next part is our pigtail and our capacitor. So the thought process and, and putting that together. I've had actually quite a few people that have kind of had theirs ripped off. They can't understand, you know, why things are doing what they do. Uh, they've also had the connector on their battery on the lipo side fray uh, It's because they're twisting it around to match. So we're gonna go through some of those things Might be a simple video to some but looks like it's needed. So I'll go ahead and get to the pigtail video So the first thing that we want to look at is just the orientation. So we look at our original, you know, this is, uh, you know, version two's got it the way I want it. It's exactly the length I want it. it. It's nice and easy to plug into. I'm not having to twist it. You know, you don't have to twist, twist things around. Uh, the lipo comes off the charger and this is the way uh, I'm charging it. So I literally just put the strap on it and I can plug it right in. Obviously, I'm not going to plug it in right now because the propellers are on it. So we'll have to uh, pretend that I'm plugging it in. So it's a very, uh, if you can see that on camera, it's just a, a real smooth curve. There's nothing really kinked. There's there's no 90 degrees or twists or bends. It's just a, a nice smooth curve with the minimal amount of wire possible to make it taunt. You know, it's not going to go anywhere uh, when I crash. And the bounce lead is pointing toward the ground or pointing away from the props. The other thing is not only does the orientation uh, match up nicely so you're not turning and twisting and fraying your your wires on your on your equipment. Um, look how I'm plugging this in. When I plug this in, okay, I can hold my battery pack and I can plug this in like that, okay? What happens if this quadcopter takes off when I plug it in? I don't really, I'll be honest, I don't understand why people put their pigtails to where they have to go through the prop line. So that's the other thing. I like to stay away from the prop line, plug it in like I can unplug it real quick. I got control of it. Uh, hopefully I don't get too excited, but that's the other reason. And then there's no kinking here. You know, we have a new strain relief that we made uh, on the frame video. So that should be nice to use. And we want to just see our orientation here before we get started on this video um, on this side. So let me just pull this up. So, so we have our positive side and our negative side. If you see the capacitor is on, on this side of the barrel. Okay. So the capacitor is on the opposite side. So in other words, the bottom. So what I've done is I've put a black, you see that? Oops, sorry. See that black dot? That's the side the capacitor is going to go on. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, pulling this apart. I'll zoom in. We'll get the capacitor in play. We'll go through a couple scenarios, some things to know. Um, I also want to squash the idea that people are putting like a thousand uh, microfarad capacitors. Let me grab one of them real quick. All right, so we have our capacitor bag here. So I'm I'm not kidding. I've seen these on XT30 connectors. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is way overkill. Totally unnecessary. So you can imagine what that would be like. Not needed. So this is about as big as we would need for 4S. Even if we were doing 6S, we wouldn't need much bigger. Probably probably just a little bit bigger than 25 volt. I would go with maybe 35 volt, but I would pretty much rel keep it relative around 470 microfarad. So 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, so we have our dot. We know our capacitor needs to be on this side of the dot. And I'll go ahead and unpeel or peel off this uh, um, insulation. And you remember we have the pigtail that came out of the build pack from the frame. So if you've seen the frame review, you know where this came from. If you don't have one of these and you need to make one, uh, it's really not not too hard to get a hold of the parts. All right, so we just took an X-Acto knife and a little pair of needle nose pliers, peeled the insulation off. Uh, the main thing is you just don't want to send your knife uh, deep enough into the insulation of your actual wire. So you're just scoring it and then peeling it off. So we have our capacitor here. So we have a, a long and a short leg. So you can see the short leg is going to be our negative side. And our long leg is going to be the positive side, uh, which in our case won't matter because we're going to cut these off after we bend them. And then we have our negative uh, on the barrel. So if there's no markings on your capacitor to know which way the polarity is to go, then you can use your their length. So the main thing I wanted to point out here is that you want to prep this correctly and you don't want to unsolder this and then you want to prep this correctly. If you pull or bend or mess up the uh, anode and cathode that's down inside here, you're, you're going to ruin your capacitor. And then the other thing is you might want to check this capacitor to make sure that it's actually the microfarad that it's supposed to be. I'm running 4S on this quadcopter, so I'm going with a 25 volt, 470 microfarad. Let me grab the multimeter. All right, so we'll get this tilted up so you can see it. All right, and then we'll grab our capacitor here hold the negative on the negative the positive on the positive get it just a second so 430 429 microfarad so it's pretty accurate not too bad but I mean 470 not quite so that'll work should be good to go So when I bend the uh, when I bend these, I want to use jeweler pliers. So I, I use jeweler's pliers. They don't have any teeth; they're smooth. So I hold on to the tip of that with the jeweler's pliers, and then I use an, a, another pair of pliers to bend it down. So when we bend this, we just need to make sure that our negative is on our negative side and our positive is on our positive side. Have you noticed yet that I I don't have my dot? So I'm going to end up soldering it to the wrong side. So let's go ahead and turn that over. Okay. I like using an Allen key in the head. I don't like using the, uh, I don't like putting the clamp on the connector itself because when this gets hot, the clamp can disform this and then it makes it weak. So I like to uh, uh, just put an Allen wrench down through there. Um, it also keeps this barrel inside here from getting overheated. So anyway, pull that back out a little bit. There we go. All right. So now we'll go ahead and bend our, our leads. I'll grab the lead like that and then bend it over. So now I have a 90 degree bend. And we didn't disturb the interior of our capacitor. I know I've seen I've seen people on YouTube just kind of grab these and then bend them, like bend them over or or pull them down where they need them. Um, you destroy that little that little uh, bit of um, I don't really want to get into the whole how it's made inside, but you have an anode and cathode and they're really close together. Uh, it's kind of the plates are tight, and if you go pulling on these and and you'll ruin that interior. So your capacitance goes to garbage. Or you just turn it into a short and then the back here, that little that little X, that's that's to help make this when it pops, it doesn't turn into a little firecracker. It, it just opens up there and there a little bit of oil comes out. Yeah, if this is ballooned or cracked, you don't want to use it. But that's why I measure them. Measure them with the multimeter before you use them. So we'll bend that one up. So now we have both of them bent at a 90 degree. And now we want to just find out where we are flat wise. So where where's our wires going to bend to our, see right about 
right about there so we can make a mark. See if I can film this. So right there at the top of that mark, we want to, we want to, that's where we want to bend it over. Does that make sense? The top of that mark anyway. So we'll grab our jeweler pliers again. Just grab a hold of that like that. Now if you want to, as long as you have a hold of what's behind that, you know, you can take your finger and bend that up. I like to use pliers because it just makes it easy to film. And now we'll grab the other side. There's another reason for doing this. Okay. So now we have our bends that we need. We should be flush here. The other thing is we're going to insulate this uh, area. Once we solder this in, we're going to pipe some, um, we're going to pipe in some hot glue and then we're going to shrink wrap the whole thing. And that way we can grab it and squish it with our fingers and we don't have to worry about it shorting out. We don't have to worry about this getting uh, damaged or, you know, twisted or pulled on. So we're going to make this kind of like a one piece unit, if you will. So let me just get some space here so you can see. So we'll go ahead and cut our cut our wires uh, just enough to solder in. Okay. And now we'll get some tinning paste. So we'll tin up these ends here. Got my iron good and hot on 400. Get the tip nice and clean. Got some just gonna touch that real quick and just tin those tin those leads a little bit. So now we do need to get a little bit of fresh solder here. Okay, but before we go touching this, this is the the flux core inside this isn't enough. Okay, so we're just going to put a little bit of rosin paste on it. We don't want too much. We don't want to make this whole thing all gooey, but we definitely want to get, we want to have a catalyst for our heat transfer. And then we also want something that will cure that tin bond. The, the tin, when it bonds, we don't want it, we don't want it looking like that. Okay. We're just going to give it a little just a little extra, but we we don't want to we don't want to heat it up so much that we flow the solder all the way around the whole entire piece cuz then our wire will fall out and we don't want to do that. Okay. Put these wires in right there next to it. That's one. That's two. Okay, so that's it. I'm just going to add a little bit. Just a little bit over here. Okay. Turn my iron down. Turn it off. So now our soldering is done. So as you can see, we have a nice piece here that is uh it's rigid it's not going anywhere um now we need to make a grip basically for this area here so we can grab this and do what we want with it so while the hot glue gun's heating up i just want to go through a couple of things real quick um this is the heat shrink tubing that i use uh, i got it off amazon this heat shrink tubing is kind of a little thicker and it has a a pretty amazing uh, amount of adhesion inside. So when you heat this up, it also glues the inside of things. So this is the this is what I'd like to use for this project. And 
probably got the right tube here so we can get over top of our XT30 and then we're just going to stretch it a little bit so we can get over top of our capacitor and we're going to make that one piece so nothing will move uh, in this junction we don't want anything to move in here and we're going to put hot glue down in there so if it does break loose or we crash real bad or we hit it with a prop or uh, racing with a buddy and he hits us from behind it's it's not going to short out because the hot glue that's inside is going to keep these pieces from touching each other you get what i'm saying so The other thing is, is because we've given a little bit of a zigzag in here, uh, if this were to move a little bit, it's going to have a, a just a touch of play to where it's not going to just break off. If we just bent them at an angle straight down, probably a, a little weaker of a joint. All right, so we'll take our hot glue in here, and we're just going to focus the camera first. So we'll go ahead and just put hot glue right in between here. Okay. And then I just want to put a little bit right here on the wires. Squish this down. And then we'll go ahead and I like to take a couple of screwdrivers. I just take push up in there and then stretch that out. I don't want to stretch it too much. You make it weak and then when you heat it up it, it rips or breaks. So we just kind of stretch that out and put that over top of there, about where we want it. Now you can use a you can use a, uh, a heat gun for this, and it'll come out nice and neat and clean. It won't be all burnt and looking, and you know, all old and tea colored and kind of cool and then heating that also heats up some of that uh, glue in there so here's our pigtail oops look at this little dude see that little guy oh, I hate those all right so all right so we have our piece all done uh, there's no there's no way that that's gonna uh, go anywhere I mean this is you know it's still hot but you get my drift so we have our negative we have our positive and the orientation on the quadcopter is gonna go like that so we'll be ready to go I can't wait I know I, I zip tied this thing on here but I wanna oh man how how cool is that gonna be Got that up in there. Nice strain to leave and you pull on that all day and it ain't going anywhere. And look at the wires aren't all smashed like it is on my other quadcopter. I love it. And that's just going to go right under there. Plug right into the battery. So that's the, uh, that's the pigtail. Um, the last thing I want to do uh, is go ahead and get the multimeter out. And we're just, we're going to check two things. We're going to check the... Uh, it's beeping at me because the battery is getting low. Uh, we're just going to check continuity. Let me get this here so you're, you can see the screen on this thing. <laughs> there, is that good? All right, so uh, we're going to discharge our capacitor. Okay. And now we're going to charge it up just a scotch enough to get our test. It should give us like a little beep or indication and then go back to overload. Okay. So overloads, that means that we're not shorted out. But now our capacitor is charged up. Okay, so now we can go over here to capacitant. I'm right, sorry about that. It looks like I had uh, the camera froze up. So I wasn't recording there, hopefully. But anyway, so we'll go ahead and grab our uh, leads here. And we're just going to put these on. And we're going to measure our capacitance uh, to find out you know, if we damaged anything inside. So 431, that's good. I'm I'm happy with 431. You know, it says 470. I would like to be more like 450 or 485 or something in that neighborhood. But, you know, 430 does the trick. Um, we know that we haven't damaged the capacitor inside. So we're good to go. This uh, the other thing we can do is go to our uh, voltage here. So we have our DC uh, voltage check. 
we can go ahead and place our leads on there. So before we hook this up to our flight controller and do all these wonderful things, uh, we can go ahead and test this. Make sure these are not touching each other. We'll go ahead and uh, send 4S LiPo voltage into it. And we'll just check to make sure that we have storage voltage. So that's good. And everything seems to be working good. And we'll disconnect. And you can see how long that holds on. That capacitor, it's something. Look at that. Now, there's nothing connected to it. It's just that capacitor is draining. If you touch these leads together right now, it'll make a little pop, which we don't want to do. Pretty cool, huh? So anyway, so we're good to go. This is this is ready. This is ready to go. And we'll just let this uh, drain off. You know, back in the day, in DeVry, they would expel you if you charged a capacitor. Of course, it'd be a bigger one. And you bend the leads down on the body and then throw it to your buddy and snap him in the hand. <laughs> it, like, automatically got you expelled. So, we'll go ahead and pack everything up and clean up. So, there's there's our power lead. It's ready to go. Um, I think that's it. So, hey, if this helped you out, uh, you know... Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you hate it. <laughs> Man, you you give me a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze.